we we learned in different ways. Um, every morning, after the davening and after breakfast, we went into yeshiva, the clothes, and we learned in a group. We studied. I would say for that age, for my age group, I studied with older boys, and we studied Gomorra, and uh, I still managed to learn the, in, in Munkaj there was a gymnasium, the Hebrew gymnasium, and a private teacher, a private professor from there, taught us Hebrew, uh, well, we have about four or five of us, and uh, he taught us the whole curriculum what they learned in the gymnasium. We were able to learn with him. My sister learned separately, and the younger brothers went to Cheder to learn. Actually, only one brother, the younger, stayed home most of the time because he was still very young. And what I want to stress is we always talk now, and it's interesting. I mean, I'm, a, I'm in education, and I see children coming coming with, with, with we, at least I, I haven't seen anybody coming hungry and we were many times hungry at least I was, not many of them um, and if we give a little bit of much homework here people talk about pressure pressure is this when you go and on, the, on your way to shoe you don't know how many times you are hit because it depends how many times you run in to a Hungarian uh, soldier or to a Hungarian uh, uh, drunkard or to a Hungarian policeman, whatever. And you always get, for somehow you get kicked or hit or spit at. And then you come back and at night you again learn and, and you have no questions. You, you don't even think it's too hard for you. Sometimes you learn even night when, when there's no light. And it, it, it just the motivation, it's amazing how, how permeated it was all through to the population, this, this drive, this goal, this, this for achieving, for learning, for excelling. That's something to be admired of. There were in Munkaj, Belzer Hasidim, and Zidi Choiver Hasidim, and uh, in Krakow and Vilna and all that, there were probably uh, 18 different fractions, and they all managed to have little fights in between them. Also, I recall vividly that the Kashrut, every other, you know, you had to go with the chickens who to have them. Uh, to a shoichet. So, and it wasn't like you went into a, uh, when you had your chicken, you had to, my mother used to take our housekeeper with her and get these fresh chickens and then she had to go to the shoichet. I didn't accompany her on the strips because I was too, I didn't like the sight that I recall. Once I tried to go, but I didn't like the site where they were killing the chickens. But what I recall as a child, that certain times this was kosher, and the rabbi said, this kind of a rabbi's kashrut is not kosher enough. Now this was all uh, because of certain uh, fights uh, Bechloikes. Yeah, inner fights. Inner fights between the different fractions, which were quite interesting. If you were a supporter of the Munkach Rebbe, he, they, it was definitely a uh, off limits to have anything to do with the Zionist movement. What was his name? Uh, Shapiro, Rabbi Shapiro. And uh, my grandfather was definitely a 100% supporter of the Munkach Rebbe. So as such, the family respected my grandfather's uh, wishes, although my father too, uh, must, he was a little bit more modern in thinking, but he certainly would not go against his father's uh, convictions. And the Munkach Rebbe in, in, in our town has made the Hebrew gymnasium so 
off limits that anybody uh, participating in any of the activity for any for that matter in Zionist activities was totally almost an out, outcast. So, therefore, it was obvious that uh, my family would have nothing to do with the Hebrew Gymnasium. Now. Uh, going to the other extreme, to the German school, you got to remember this was in the early 30s when I went to the German school. And then uh, German was the, uh, the cultural language, and that was a language which uh, we were brought up with. As a matter of fact, we had uh, Fräulein in the house, who was, uh, which is considered today a governess or something like that which uh, again was uh, communicating with us in German. So that was the language and therefore they sent us to the German schools. Naturally, in later of the years, in the late 30s, when uh, German was not the popular language anymore, it was a different situation. Passover, the holiday was uh, kept very much uh, in an orthodox way. My father wore a kettle over his suit, but on the same time he had non-Jewish, he had non-Jewish friends that were invited to our Seder. And these were two couples, dignitaries from the city, and one always used to ask my father Alex, when are we invited already to the holiday when you are wearing your wife's nightgown? So this I recall as a child that he was teasing him because he had this beautiful white kettle with lace around put over his, because this he used to like to show them what was the customary thing. My father read the whole Haggadah and translated it for them into Hungarian. And he was very good at it. And um, they enjoyed, but also we were invited to for their holidays, for their Christmas Eve holidays.